TypeScript generics can be incredibly powerful, and sometimes you can use them in ways that you might not expect. We're going to look at an example here of how I recently used generics to really give me stronger types in a React component. I'm just using the TypeScript playground here, so I don't have React set up, but you can imagine this function here is a React component that takes some props, and imagine down here we're actually calling this as a React component. So the component is a drop-down component, and you can see in our props here we take some array of options that should show up, and then we also have a handle for when one of those items is selected in the dropdown component. Now we have a shape for dropdown options, which right now is just a value that takes a string. And of course, options is an array of that dropdown option type. And then on select receives that dropdown option type as its argument. So we're passing some options, we're passing our on select here. Now, in a lot of cases, if you're using a dropdown component, you probably have a like predetermined set of options, right? Which is something you can hard code. And what that means is we can actually get some strong typing here because I know exactly what my set of options are. And so where I have my arg here and on select, instead of just seeing that this is a dropdown option, I should be able to see that this is either a object with a value of gadget or an object with a value of widget. And then of course the same thing here for value where we're logging arg.value, instead of this just being a string, I should be able to see a union of what the actual values could be. And then maybe I could use a switch statement or something else to determine what the right behavior for this select is. So how can generics help solve this problem? Before we even get to generics, you might think, well, we just need to make sure that this shape is not being generalized in any way. That TypeScript knows that these strings are the only possible values. So you might say we want to add as const after our gadget and also after our widget so that we know these strings can't change. And if we hover, we can see that that really hasn't changed anything. We could also say, well, let's just make this whole shape as const. So we know that not only are these values constant, really this is the only shape we should expect for options for this particular call. At least we're getting a type error now. It says here that the type that we're passing in is read only and it cannot be assigned to the mutable type dropdown option array. Okay, so dropdown option array here is considered mutable, which makes sense. So we can at least get rid of this error by saying that this is a read only array. So that seems to solve our type problem, but of course our value is still just a string. And of course this is a video about generics, so you know the solution here is gonna be generics, but let's see how generics can help out here. The idea is that when we say options has this particular type exactly, then really that's the only information TypeScript is gonna check. It's gonna check that options matches that type, and then when we try and use the options elsewhere, it can't know anything more specific than that. But what we can express with generics is that options is some type that does match this, but can be something a little bit different, something narrower, as long as it at least matches this. As you probably know, the generic syntax is going to go up here inside of our angle brackets. And what we want to say is T extends this particular type. So let's grab this type here and we'll cut that out and we'll paste it right here. And so now we're creating this type T that does match this, but can be different as long as it continues to match that. So our constant shape down here is going to be narrower, which means it will match this. Okay, so options can be T. And as you can see, we're still looking pretty good here. We're not getting any errors on options. Now we need to also use T as the argument to our on select here, right? Now T is an array, right? It's a read only array, which actually has its own type in TypeScript. So we could collapse this a little bit and get rid of one layer of our angle brackets. But T is still an array and the argument to on select is not an array. It's one of the items in the array. TypeScript has a pretty nice syntax for indexing into arrays. This works for indexing into objects as well, which is just your initial type and then using square brackets here. The neat thing in the case of arrays is we can use T number. T square brackets number represents the type of any of the individual elements in T, which in our case we know are always something that matches the shape dropdown options. So now we have redefined dropdown props to include this generic T and we're using T in both these cases. Now we're getting an error in our function here and that is that we do need to supply our generic argument here. So let's go ahead and pass T here. Now, of course, we need t to come from somewhere. So in function calls like this, we can create a generic parameter t kind of between the function name and the arguments. We are still getting an error. t does not satisfy the constraint. Okay, so t here in this context is just any type. But the truth is it can't be any type. It has to be some type that matches this shape right here, our read-only array of drop-down options. So let's just copy that same condition and paste it down here. It's a little bit unfortunate that we have to duplicate our t extends read-only array drop-down options in both the type 
and also in the component itself, but hopefully it's worth it for what we're about to see. Now you'll notice we don't have to pass our generic prop down here when we call the dropdown component. And that's great because really what's going on here is TypeScript can infer it. It can see what we're passing to option and it knows that that is supposed to match this type. If it doesn't match that type, it will throw an error. And if it does, it will use that as the value of T. So we're passing that to options here. And if we hover over options, we can see now that it does have a narrower type. It's a read-only array, and it's got two objects with read-only values in it, one with gadget and one with widget. Excellent. So if we hover over arg now, we can see we have reached our goal. We've got an argument that is either an object with a value of gadget or an object with a value of widget. And lastly, if we hover over value, it is a union of gadget or widget. And of course, we should be able to add a new value here. And now if we hover over value, you can see that foobar shows up in our union. So I think this is a really great example of how you can use generics to control the higher level shape of arguments and values within your system while still using the narrower type of those values. This kind of has a flavor of using the satisfies keyword in more recent versions of TypeScript, but this has been around for a long time and I think is a great use of generic arguments. By the way, since last week's video, this channel has crossed 10,000 subscribers. Thank you so much to every single one of you who's been watching these, who's been commenting, who's been liking, and of course, who has been subscribing to these videos. I really have had a lot of fun making these and I'm not stopping anytime soon. So if you haven't subscribed, please do, and I will see you in the next video. Can you hear the ice cream truck going by out there?